Hello. Before this video starts, I want to insert a little clip of me talking about an app that I really wanted to show you guys and I was really excited to show you guys. So let me talk about that and then we'll get into the video. Before this video starts, I would really, really like to talk about an app that I personally have used um, for the last two months now. BetterHelp is an affordable private online counseling for the LGBT community and anybody else who would love to join. BetterHelp is super easy, it's very affordable, and overall probably a lot more comfortable than going in face to face with a counselor. This app reached out to me and I thought it would be really, really awesome to share with you guys because like me, I'm sure that you guys are probably going through some hard things too. So if you're thinking about hopping on this app, all you need to do is download the app and fill out a survey so that it can match you with your counselor it'll have you fill out a personal survey just kind of describing what you want to work on and what you feel is wrong once you get matched up with your counselor you can just hit them up whenever and you just tell them what's going on and they'll immediately respond and try to help you out with your situation the last two months that i've been on this app i personally been talking with my counselor about my add and how i feel it was affecting my life and affecting my job and she gave me really really great tips on how to kind of remember things and get things in order so that i can work better it's way more affordable and if you think that you can't buy it and you can't afford the counseling you can actually sign up for a financial aid that they can help you with you don't have to go and travel or find a therapist that you like if you don't like your therapist you can switch and get partnered with a new one it's very easy very quick and you're connected from home so you don't have to leave if you're if you're going through a rough time there and then you can hit up your counselor immediately it's very time convenient for you and what you're doing at the moment and and that's what's so great about it i'll also put the link down in my description and you guys can get started whenever it is your boy ray b maybe back with a good video this time and today i'm doing something a little different um I thought that I would sit down and I would talk about my transition with you guys. I don't genuinely do a lot of trans related things and I feel like I should. <laughs> I don't know. I see, you know, my friends all the time do stuff talking about their transitions or answering questions and I genuinely haven't really done that with you guys. So I wanted to sit down and talk about my transition in my life and everything that goes on with that. And then I think I'll probably insert some pictures here and there. Um, maybe do a little draw my life sort of thing. I'm not really sure yet. I don't know what I'm doing for this video. Pretty much out the womb, I have always liked girls. Um, so when I was growing up, I was dating girls for as long as I can remember. I liked girls for as long as I can remember. I think that I went through a couple phases being bi, um, here and there, you know, like I, I've dated um, I think my first boyfriend was Justin. A lot of you guys know that, but I have dabbled in thinking that I've liked boys in the past. Um, in genuinely, like, at this moment, I like girls, and I've said that for a while now. Rolling into seventh grade was when I genuinely kind of started to question where my head was at based on gender. I knew that I really liked girls. I knew that I was a tomboy but it was getting to the point where all of my tomboy friends were not tomboys anymore. They were growing up to be women. And it freaked me out a lot because I thought that I was abnormal. I was having people around me tell me it's okay to be a tomboy, but sooner or later you'll grow out of it. Me believing that I was never ever gonna come out of this phase. In seventh grade, I think that I started to tell, I think I told like, my girlfriend at the time and I told like my best friend at the time that I had thoughts of being a boy and I was having dreams of being a boy, but never genuinely said that I was trans or wanted to pursue that or anything like that. And I've never been afraid to say what I think is right. So I never was shy or anxious or anything about telling my dad or telling anybody for that matter that I wanted to be a boy. Um, I don't really quite remember what happened. I think that my dad kind of just pushed it off his shoulder, um, was like, all right, like, whatever, like, that's weird. <laughs> but rolling into eighth grade, I guess once I was rolling into eighth grade, I wanted to transition out of being a tomboy and trying to be um, more like a, a girl in, in a sense of fashion and such like that. Um, I remember I went to school in eighth grade, like the second or third week, like the first month 
of me being in eighth grade, I, I was I went to school for the first time in like short shorts and I ended up breaking down having a panic attack by like second period, maybe end of first. Um, I remember it was like so early in the day. I broke down, had a panic attack and had to go to the health room to change my shorts because I couldn't wear it. And I didn't know why. I didn't know why I wasn't confident or comfortable. I didn't know what I was feeling at the time. All I knew is that I didn't like it and I wasn't gonna do it. <sighs> take off, take off the, the blanket. Yeah, look at them shoulders. Where's my train of thought? This is, this is what happens when you're ADD. So towards the end of eighth grade, I believe summer going into ninth grade, I was dating someone. Um, and I, I dated this girl for a very, very long time. Um, and, and throughout dating her and, and being with her, I genuinely saw myself as her boyfriend. Not as a lesbian couple, but as I was her guy. I was her man. Like I would be there. Like I was just that rock in the relationship. I didn't know why, but I started to have dreams of, of me, you know, being her boyfriend and, and wearing boy clothes and I would even have dreams of me having the male part and it was really really confusing and I would always talk to her about it and she would genuinely just tell me to be myself and, and to do whatever I wanted. So I guess leading to that going into ninth grade um, I cut my hair. Obviously I've been having the, this thought for a pretty long time before I actually did something about it but I told my dad and, and Chelsea and everyone that I wanted to cut my hair. And I specifically remember me being like, I want to cut my hair like a boy. Because when I told my dad that I wanted to cut my hair really short, he went on Google and looked up some pictures for me. And I was like, oh, wow, like, this is nice. But when he showed me the pictures, they were all very, very girly kind of pixie cut kind of haircuts. And I was like... No, I'm thinking like like real, like shaggy kind of real boyish looking haircut. And I remember saying that to my dad and my dad just kind of being like, hmm. <laughs> Thankfully enough, my stepmom, Chelsea, was very, very supportive. And I remember her kind of coming to me after we like me and my dad had this like weird, awkward discussion and then kind of like nothing laid out. Like he didn't give me a yes. He didn't give me a no. Um, I just remember going back up to my room and Chelsea coming into my room and, and being like, hey, you know, it's hair. If you want to change up your style and you want to change your hair, you can do that. And I honestly like will always remember this because it was something really empowering, yet so small of a sentence for my for my stepmom to just be like, you don't have to ask anybody to be yourself really stuck to me. On March 31st, I got my hair cut. In that moment of time, coming home and, and seeing these, seeing this person, seeing my haircut, seeing myself just genuinely look a good 10% more masculine, told me everything I needed to know. I knew in that time, in that second of seeing myself in the mirror, I knew exactly what I wanted. I was like, I don't know what this means. I don't know why I feel this way, but I'm gonna make it happen. I was like, I'm, I'm gonna be myself. And if that means that I'm changing my gender, I'm changing my fucking gender. That night of getting my hair cut, I, I ran into my dad's room and I was like, I wanna get new clothes for the summer. It was in the middle to end of ninth grade when I got my hair cut. Uh, it was March 31st. So that's all I know. I ran into my dad's room and I was like, I want to get boy clothes. I, I want clothes like Chase, my brother. And my dad just stopped me in my tracks and he was like, do you want to be a boy? He's like, are you trying to be a boy? And I looked at him and I was like, well, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to be myself and, and I think that's what I want. It wasn't that he was unsupportive, but I think that he genuinely was really shocked. And I think that he did not see it coming, which I don't really know how, but 
sometimes, you know, you really don't know a person like you know a person. He was like, we can get new clothes, but I, I don't know what's going on here. I don't want this to get out of hand. You know, he told me things like that. And I was like, okay, like, okay, like, whatever. Like, kind of just shaking my head and smiling and nodding like, yes, dad. Okay, dad. <laughs> um, it pretty much got to a point where after I got my hair cut and I went back to school, I was so overfilled with joy and excitement of me realizing who I am that I didn't even think about what would happen after out of me doing this. I didn't think about what my dad would think. I didn't think about anything. I went to school the day after I got my hair cut and I told every single person, every single teacher, everyone that I knew that I was a boy now. I didn't even know in this point in time, guys, that trans was a thing. I didn't, I had no idea what the word transgender was. I knew that I wanted to be a boy. I did not know that it was normal. I did not know that it, it was, I, I didn't know that it was a thing. I didn't know, I, I just, I didn't know that there was a scientific or like reasonable explanation as to why I was believing this. But that day coming home from school, my dad had already gotten two emails and a call from my teachers. My dad was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I think that he was genuinely mad. And, and I, I do understand because I feel like I didn't give him any time to process, genuinely didn't really tell him my feelings. I kind of just said that I wanted this, but I didn't really explain to him how I felt. And for a kid, if for your kid at that, to go to school and spurt around this whole thing when you haven't even heard from your child yet that this is how they felt, I would understand the kind of confusion and anger coming from him. The first thing that I just like wanted to do was go upstairs and, and find out if there was any more people like me. I found Tyra Banks, the first link that I ever watched or clicked on after Googling that was a Tyra Banks video of her with younger trans kids. And these little kids came on and they were like, yeah, you know, like Kennedy, I think was one of them, was a name of a child on Tyra's show. And he was a female to male transgender. So this little boy was born a girl, was like, I'm a, I'm a boy. And so I watched those videos and, and I, felt, I felt really good. Google made me a little confused. I remember me feeling kind of like scared and nervous about it because I thought that I was too old because all of the transgenders and stories that I was reading and Googling were for trans kids that were under the age of like nine. I was like, man, maybe I'm like too late. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I just remember being really like, kind of scared and confused about it because I was comparing myself to other people's stories. But in the same sense, I was so happy to see that there were other stories. With that, I ran to my dad. I showed him on Google. I was like, look, like this is a thing. And, and I really, really think that this is what I'm feeling and that this is me. I remember him being, you know, kind, but in the same sense, just not understanding, like not getting what I'm saying. Yeah. After that, after kind of like running to my dad, and I was actually, I kind of missed this gap. I was actually in therapy at the time, but I wasn't in therapy for that specific reason. I was in therapy because I was depressed. Um, I later on found out that my transition and not knowing who I was, was making me depressed. And after my transition and finding out who I was, um, actually I, I didn't need therapy anymore and I was a okay. I actually kind of discussed it with my therapist and when I found out and I was finding out all these things um, and my therapist was like, let's bring them in and really talk it out. You know, after that, I brought both my stepmom and my dad in with my therapist and, you know, she was like, go ahead, say what you want. And I was kind of like, I, I want to talk to you guys about the, the way that I've been feeling recently. And, you know, I think I kind of said, like, um, you know, something along the lines of, you know, I, I feel like I'm transgender and and I feel like I felt this for a really long time, but I didn't know that it was a thing or, or that it was okay to be this way. And I, I was confused, but now I really feel like I know for sure. I remember Chelsea saying, like, 
You know, we don't care, you know, as long as you're you and as long as you stay kind and, and you're honest and, you know, you're, you're a good person and you do good for others. She was like, you know, we'll love you no matter what. I remember her saying that. And I, I don't I don't have any memory of, of my dad saying anything, but I'm sure I'm sure that he was positive. Um, I'm sure that he was supportive. When I told my mom at the time, I don't have a clear, <laughs> this is so sad. I don't have a clear memory on, on that conversation either. I actually call my mom up on Skype because a lot of you guys know that she wasn't really like there in the moment. So I'd have to call her on the Skype and I called her up on the Skype and I was like, um, I wanted to talk to you about something. Like I got my hair cut, like check it out. And she's like, oh, you look so cute. And I was like, I straight up was like, how would you feel if I was your son now? And I believe my mom was like, that'd be cool. <laughs> like, I think those were her words on the dot. <laughs> but um, I don't remember any of the conversation after that. My mom's always just been kind of like with the flow, like whatever you're saying, dog, like it's all right. I do believe she was supportive, but she wasn't really there at the time. So she didn't really, she wasn't very, very involved in my transition. Later on, you know, like I, I, I started you now. And when I started you now, I was just out as a boy, not even saying that I was trans on social media, just kind of being like, I'm a boy, no questions asked. Um, <laughs> later on, as I started to gain viewers on you now and friends, I told them what was up. I was like, yeah, like actually, like I was born a girl, I'm transgender, like female to male. You guys know, then, you know, I met up with Justin and Justin was the f first ever transgender, other transgender that I've ever talked to in my life. He was a huge inspiration for me um, in the beginning, just kind of being there for me. And he answered my questions. He answered my like binder questions and just every question that I had about what the frick was going on. And he was amazingly supportive, uh, really good friend. After that, you know, I met Kale and Jack, and, and they were, you know, the second, third um, friends that I, I really clicked with and other friends that were in the LGBT community. But, you know, after that, you know, here I am. I've just been making videos and, and doing my thing, and, and yeah, that's kind of the end of my transition. Now we're here. I got top surgery. If you guys want, you guys can click the link down below. I'll put a link to my top surgery documentary. I did a whole hour long documentary on my top surgery. And um, yeah, I'll show you guys my updates. All right, so here is an update. I am, I got my f February 5th was my surgery date. So four months post-op, mm -hmm. yeah. Four months post-op. Um, I still have some swellingness down here and up here and a little bit down here. Um, but the doctor said with working out and growing, healing, it should go down. Um, and yeah, so that's what it is. Anyway, okay, back. All right, guys, that's it. That is the video. Thank you guys so much for listening to my journey and coming along with me and listening to my transition. Uh, for all my young trans viewers out there, I hope that maybe this helped you in some way. You guys can look at some of the things that I've done and maybe do the same with your transition um, or with your coming out. With all of that said, make sure you guys tap that bell and like and comment. And also subscribe because I make all sorts of freaking videos I don't even know what they're about. I just make a bunch all the time. So anyway, I love you guys so much. Thank you guys for being the best. I'll see you guys next Thursday. Goodbye.